Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight with another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. It's time for us to finish up our canopy. We need to get everything set up in place and now after having done all the cutting and fitting and bending, we can actually rivet it all together. But before we do that, there's one last step and that is we're going to take the inner rails that we had there as well as the canopy frame itself. We're gonna take that out to Ann Jen, uh, our friends over there that do incredible finishing work and uh, get it all powder coated. And we're gonna do that in a matte black powder coating. That way, the inside that we see from the canopy of the structural members, that tubular frame and those side trim pieces that hold that frame all together will all be a beautiful matte black. So let's get to Ann Jen finishing now and uh, take a look because they've told me it's ready. Let's go see how it looks. All right, I'm back at Ann Jen with Sean Flood. How are you doing, Sean? How are you doing? Um, listen, I'm, I'm so excited because when we left this, the last part, we're trying to wrap up the canopy on the Mustang and it was green and green with, you know, silver and all the black that you did on the, on, on the instrument panel and everything. Just having this green tubing didn't look good. Yeah, it and doesn't match so well. No, it doesn't match so well. And what was so cool here is I didn't know that you have the ability to, to effectively go over powder coat and change the color. So even if someone has a powder coated part, you can redo it in another color. And this, this is gorgeous. I mean, yeah. this came out just fantastic. And, uh, and in addition to the actual pieces that were here, we brought over are finished finishing strips from the inside, which were bare metal. And those are also now all this gorgeous flat black. And that's gonna be right at our shoulders. This is like, this is what we're gonna see all the time. It's gonna wear really well. Um, tell me a little bit about what's involved in, in going over powder coating, which you did on the tube. So uh, yeah, so with the stuff that's already powder coated beforehand, um, you would, you would basically just have to do some surface prep if it's a texture or if it's, uh, you know, a really rough or beat up surface. You want to do a little bit of a surface prep, make sure it's okay. nice and smooth. And then you would spray it as normal. Um, you just really want to make sure that the charge is set a lot lower so that it doesn't reject the, you know, the yeah. charge and powder from the part itself because the first layer of powder acts as more of an insulator right. from the, the grounding that you need to so, get the powder. So it's a lot of technique. It's the fact you've got so many years to know of experience to know what kind of charge you need to get the particles to adhere to the parts that we already brought you. Yeah, it gets it gets a bit dicey. Um, you know, you can't put too much on, whereas regular powder on a raw part, you have all that grounding yeah. and you can build it up to get like a, a desired mill thickness that you want. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to reworking, um, or second coats, you really have to be careful about putting too much on because then it can void right. and uh, reject the powder and then it messes up the whole finish. Yeah. Well, the other thing that we did is we took all the parts for our tail wheel and main gear assembly and those were, were raw metal here and we made those, you did those in silver. They are, they, these are like museum pieces. <laughs> they are absolutely gorgeous and as you note, they masked off using a special tape, the areas that hinge, they actually go into areas that are gonna be lubricated and hinge, but these are, these are fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad you like them. And these are gonna be right down there, you know, where rocks and dirt are kicking up on them and they have to survive. And they're also out for everyone to see. So, man, I mean, they're gonna hold up nice. They are, so. they, are they are just fantastic. Well, thanks again. Yeah, um, I appreciate I, it. I, I have to say, being at home now and you look around at everything and everything is like my mind's always like, oh my God, what about that? That could be powder coated. Yeah, anything, <laughs> you anything must you do want. that yeah, yourself. Yeah. Hey, I, I do it all the time. I mean, I'm here all day, so it's interesting to go out in the world and think of stuff that could use a little bit more color, you know? Yeah, so. well, if you have a chance, go check out Anjen, A-N-J-E-N.com. Yes. And uh, they are here in Marlboro, Massachusetts. They do, if you have a business, they do absolutely incredible work for your business. You're gonna work directly here with Sean, of course, uh, and uh, you can, uh, Scott owns a company. You'll see the whole team here. They're absolutely fantastic. And thanks again for helping us out yeah, of course. with our Mustang bill. Yeah, thank you. You got it? Yeah. All right. And uh, we'll see you back at the shop where we'll put all of this back together. 
All right, we're back here from Amgen Finishing and it is time now to assemble all of this together. And again, I have to say, it just looks spectacular. This is the frame that you saw there at their factory. It's, it's just gorgeous. It's got this beautiful matte black finish to it. Um, everything is just perfect. We've got the strips that came back that are going to be, they're so carefully uh, cut and bent and shaped uh, in this very complex curve to fit inside there. And I'll tell you, having the powder coating on it in this matte black just looks gorgeous. So um, it's time for me to rivet it together, start turning all of this into one piece. We've got the interior trim pieces. We've got this, uh, the canopy, frame that you see here behind me you can see the canopy just waiting to uh, have that put together and then of course as you saw in previous videos the skirt pieces these uh, the canopy skirt that's going to be put together after that that is all set so I kind of struggle to get this back in place here that's all set and then our forward edge cap that we made and bent and had all of that shrunk in order to fit perfect all those pieces are here. They're all ready to go. Let's get riveting and assembling this amazing canopy. Now I'm using these black anodized rivets, which is cool because it takes care of everything there and I don't have to worry about painting them afterwards. All right, take a look at what we just finished on this part of the canopy. That piece with the black rivets and all powder coated just works so well. You can see it go around the back here, all the way to the trim. It just looks so cool. I had to stop there and show you. All right. Now that the canopy frame is all done and ready on the inside, now it is time to get it clecoed in place with the canopy glass and then start riveting the lower uh, row of rivets that's going to go into the lower support frame from the canopy frame. We're going to do it this and then we'll also be doing the canopy bow at this point. All right, so it's time to start riveting the whole canopy together. Uh, and we're using these wide flange rivets. Not sure if you can actually see that. It's a little hard for the camera to pick that up. But as opposed to a normal rivet, which is, uh, looks like this, and has a normal small rivet head, we've got this one, which as you can see, has a much bigger, wider head. This is called a large flange rivet. And we're using all aluminum large flange rivets here because you don't want to crack the plexiglass. You want to use as, as distributed pressure as possible over the widest possible area. Now we have a metal strip that is the edge cap in the front and that's going to help distribute it quite a bit. I'm still going to use large flange rivets there because I just think it looks better to use it all the way around uh, as, as we come in. It just has a good look. Um, so I'm going to go wide flange all the way around and then we're just using the rivets themselves at this lower portion that goes into the bar and we'll be uh, checking again. We'll go in with uh, one more time with the drill and make sure that, that everything fits right uh, and comes in for all these holes that are going in. So we use a large flange rivet for the lower end and then the skirt will go on and it will get a large flange rivet as well that'll go in uh, to put that in. The skirt I'm not gonna put on until we're actually putting it over here to, for final mounting. But for the rest of it, I'm gonna do it down here. So um, we're all set to go. Time to start riveting this now. All right, time to start riveting this on using the large flange rivets that we talked about. Now, anytime that you're working with something like this where you're, you're you're, you need to you know, work outward. You need to find a spot that's gonna be your center spot and start 
like riveting in as you go outward because it's going to flatten things more than you've ever done with Clicos and things inevitably will move a little bit when that happens. And so you have the drill handy to kind of recenter anything that's a bit of a problem or just isn't lining up the, the way that you intended on it doing. And so I'm going to do that here with these two and we'll get started. I can actually see it forming and spreading as I do that. It's one of the reasons it's so important to uh, to, to you know watch it and work it way work it down instead of just going from one side to the other. Or And now it's time to do this lower row here. Again, using the large flange rivets to pull it in. It should all fit in nicely. Let's give that a shot and see how, how we do. All right, it's time to put the canopy on and get to work on the skirt. And for this next step, I'm gonna need some help. Hey, Otto. There he is. He's ready to help us put the canopy on. Otto, you told me you were going to help, man. All he does is sit there and look good. Never actually helps when I need them. You stay in there. Now, uh, for the canopy nuts that hold onto the sliders there, I got these really cool things. These are 1032 nuts that are drilled. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little hole in there for safety wire. And you'll see later on, we're gonna do something pretty cool with that because we wanna make it easy to have an emergency exit from this and uh, that's going to help us do that so put one of those on there i don't get the other one okay so that is all in place and now it's time to start working on the last piece of the puzzle here and that's the skirt there we go And then we can start mounting this in.
All right, that's it for another cool building stage on our Titan T51D Mustang. Otto's still here in the back seat, so uh, he says it's got a good view from there. But it's just so wild to see all of this come together. And uh, man, there isn't a heck of a lot less to, left to do. We gotta get to the center section, do the fuel tanks, get the center section mounted onto the fuselage, and then move on from there to get this baby finished up. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight. Be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free mobile apps on Apple and Android devices. Just look up Social Flight, one word, Social Flight. And we've got tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, our Fly to Win Challenge, where you can win prizes. There's just so much going on. You've got uh, wings courses that you can take for credit. If you're an AMP, you can get AMT credits or get your IA renewal for free on Social Flight. Everything is there. And every Tuesday night, we've got our great show, Social Flight Live. Just check out socialflightlive.com. We've got amazing guests every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Until next time, I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. My name is Jeff Simon. I wish you all blue skies. You ready, Otto? <laughs>